high in the halls of the kings who are gone. Sansa is locked in a room with Jane Poole, who does nothing but cry for her father. Sansa, thinking Jane was acting childish, has told her friend that she would ask Queen Cersei to let her see her father, but it does not seem to have helped. Sansa herself wept the first day. She was used to the sound of fighting in Winterfell, but knowing it was real, with angry shouts and the moans of dying men, was different. At first she pleaded for news and to see someone familiar, such as her father or her gallant prince, but she got no answer. Then they shoved Jane into the room, and she claimed they were killing everyone and that there were bodies on the steps. The next day the fighting was over and the Lannister guardsmen patrolled the walls. The servants who bring them food and clothes refused to answer any questions. At sunset they heard the bells tolling from the great sept of Baelor, proclaiming King Robert's death. Sansa is afraid for her beautiful prince and her father, and at night she dreams of Joffrey on the throne, with her beside him, with everyone she knows coming before them to bend the knee. Sir Boris Blunt comes for her on the third day. Resolved to be a lady no matter what, Sansa compliments the ugly knight. He leads her out of Magor's Holdfast, where she sees a body impaled on the spikes of the dry moat. Rather than being taken to the Queen's apartments, Sansa is brought to the council chamber and presented to Queen Cersei and the small council, though her prince is not there as she was hoping. The Queen asks if she has been well taken care of and Sansa affirms that they have, though no one will tell them what has happened. Sansa's use of the word us leads to confusion until Sansa explains that Jane is staying with her. Cersei is surprised to discover that Jane has been put in with Sansa and expresses concern about what absurd tales Jane might have told Sansa. Remembering her promise, Sansa asks about Veon Paul, unable to imagine killing a steward who does not even carry a sword. Cersei asks what to do with Jane, and Littlefinger states that he will find a place for her. The Queen then instructs that Jane be taken out to Littlefinger's apartments, and saying that Littlefinger will take her to her father should calm her down. Sansa asks where Veon is and where Jane is being sent, wondering why Littlefinger must be involved, but Cersei brushes off the question. Cersei tells Sansa that Joffrey loves her, but that her father is a traitor. Varys and Pycelle explain that Lord Eddard, who had sworn to protect King Robert's children, was planning to turn the kingdom over to Stannis Baratheon. Then Cersei shows Sansa the letter her father wrote to Stannis, which has been taken off the captain of his guard. Sansa insists that it cannot be true because her father was the king's friend. Cersei informs Sansa that she cannot allow the daughter of a traitor to marry her son. Sansa is overwhelmed by the unfairness of taking away her beloved because of something her father did. Cersei states that she knew Sansa was innocent from the moment Sansa came to her with Lord Eddard's plan to take her away. Sansa insists that she did this because she loves Joffrey, remembering that she felt very wicked sneaking away to the Queen. She had wanted to go to the King, but loud and often drunk King Robert had always frightened her. She had also believed the King would probably have just sent her back to her father. After having informed the Queen of her father's plans, Sansa was locked in the High Room in Magor's Holdfast under guard. A few hours later, the fighting had started. The small council discusses whether Sansa could also turn out to be treacherous. Varys and Grand Maester Pycelle opine that the child of a traitor is also likely to become treacherous. Littlefinger points out that Sansa reminds him of her mother rather than her father. Cersei expresses doubt that Sansa can be trusted since her sister turned her wolf on Joffrey. Sansa replies that she is nothing like her treacherous sister and that she only wants to be Joffrey's wife. Cersei then suggests that if the rest of Sansa's kin prove loyal, it would rest some of the council's fears. Therefore Cersei asks that Sansa write to her lady mother and her brother Rob, explaining how Lord Eddard betrayed his king. Sansa does not know what to say, but Cersei assures her that they will provide her with the words. The important thing is that the Starks keep the king's peace, otherwise it will go hard on them and on Sansa. Sansa is also told to write that she is being well cared for and that her family must come to King's Landing and pledge fealty to Joffrey. Sansa asks to see her father but is told that if she is truly loyal she would not want to see him. Sansa says she is concerned about him and what will happen to him. She is told that their father is well and that the king will decide his punishment. Sansa realises that the king is now her gallant Joffrey, whom she knows would never hurt her father and who is sure to listen to her pleas. Perhaps her father will only be exiled for a few years. However, if her mother or Rob did something treasonous, it will all go wrong. Sansa agrees to write the letters and ends up writing four, to her mother, her brother Rob, her aunt Lysa and her grandfather Hosta Tully. When she returns to her room, Jane and her belongings are already gone. It is only when she is drifting off to sleep that night that Sansa realises she has forgotten to ask about Arya. I demand a trial by combat. 